Oh, hey. So you want to learn how to code. Okay, okay. So you've watched pretty much every tutorial online at this point on how to code and how to get started coding and you're still having trouble getting started because it's hard, it's difficult, and it's not fun. Well, I agree. So I'm gonna give you some practical advice on how to actually get started coding and what motives you should have behind it to actually start. Because while there's good advice online, like watch tutorials, start a project, do all this, I believe that if you're actually having trouble starting something, it goes a lot deeper than not understanding what to do. You know what to do. You know you need to do tutorials, you know you need to code, and you know you need to do projects. That all makes sense, but it's still hard to start. So I'm gonna give some practical advice in this video, but before we get to that, let's go sit down over there because I don't feel like doing this whole video kind of turned sideways. Also, this entire screen is complete BS. It's a website called hackertyper.com. I was literally just smashing the keyboard and it just types. If you actually thought I was typing that fast, yeah, that's that's a completely different issue. All right, all framed up. Get out of my frame. All right, let's recap. You want to code. You feel like you've watched every video on YouTube at this point and you still can't get started. You've heard all the advice, you know what you need to do, and you still can't get this ball rolling. I know at the beginning it can feel super hard to relate to these like super smart tech people and all these like nerdy people who are like super into it and you don't understand how they're so into it and you're so not. It feels a little antagonizing. Is that the right word? I don't know. It seems like they're so passionate about coding and you just want to have the same passion that they have. Why can't you find it? Shouldn't it be easy to code if you're passionate about it? No, it's not going to be easy. It always sucks. Not always. There's, there's some payoff, but for the most part, it's just not a pleasant thing to do. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start with a counter argument. What if I told you everybody who's passionate about code is not actually passionate about code? Everybody who's passionate about code is not passionate about it. And I'm gonna give you an analogy. Let's pretend you have a friend who knows everything about power drills. They know all the brands, they know all the little bits that go on the end, they know all the machinery inside, they know everything there is to know about drills. They know which drills have the best torque, which drills are for the best job, and which drills have the best battery life. They know all this stuff about drills. When you talk to them initially, you might actually think, wow, this guy's super passionate about power drills. But you'd be wrong, because nobody's passionate about power drills. That would be ridiculous. Why would anybody be passionate about power drills? Do you see where this is going? Why the f would anybody be interested in power drills? And why the f would anybody be interested in, in code? I'm here to tell you that this person is not interested in power drills. They're interested in something like architecture, or they're interested in cars, or they're interested in tinkering with things. Something is on the other side, and power drills stand in the way. Does that make sense? They're passionate about something up here, and there's a lot of things that fall underneath it, Power drills just happens to be one of those things. Their passion's here. Power drills are not their passion. They just happen to have learned so much about power drills because it was standing in the way of them achieving what they want. So they are passionate about this tool because knowing more about the tool makes it easier for them to pursue their passion. Code is the exact same way. Coding is a tool. It is not a passion in and of itself. Every programmer who has ever proclaimed, I love to code, is lying. Not only to you, but they're lying to themselves as well because they're not understanding that their passion and love for coding is really just a derivative of their true passion, which might be up here. So for example, let's say somebody's super passionate about programming. What could their passion be? Their passion could be problem solving. Their passion could be fixing things. Their passion could be building. Their passion could be tinkering. Their passion could be like mine, design. Don't put your passions in these concrete boxes. There is not a single concrete box that is gonna feel right for all your passions. Whenever you try to pick a concrete passion, like, I like to skateboard, it always feels like a half-truth when you say things like that out loud because there's so many other things you might like. You might like to skateboard, but you might also like to play video games. Why do you like these two things? They seem unrelated. I mean, I guess they're both a game, but what do you really like about these two things? My advice is when you're finding your passion, look for an umbrella term. Don't feel so caught up on finding the concrete thing that describes your passion. Look for an umbrella term, and honestly, we have limitations of language. Don't feel like you have to pick a word, like it doesn't have to be design, it could be a sentence. It's really worth spending some time evaluating all the things you like. You know, just kind of get a piece of paper and write all the things you like. And it might sound stupid, it might be like Netflix and sleeping and, I mean, there's things that you might put down that feel ridiculous at surface value, but there might be a common thread that runs between all these things because I bet when you're writing down all these things, be honest with yourself. You know you did something when you were younger that you liked, so it might be like sleeping and this, and oh, I liked basketball when I was younger, and I also liked playing Minecraft when I was younger, and I also liked fast cars. You know, these things might seem really bizarre and unrelated, but when you put all these down, spend some time, you know, put it up there for a month, a week, a year, just look at it, and every time you look at it, think, how can these connect? 
And is there a thread that runs through all these that is a very high level thing that I could say is my passion? So how the hell is this going to help you code? The best way to learn how to code is to make code an obstacle and make code be a part of the journey instead of the destination. Code should not be the destination because that's such a bleak destination. You really wanna to get to this destination that's just a bunch of brackets and colorful text on a screen, that's not really that fun. The destination could be something like a beautiful design, a well-designed system, a well-optimized system. There is something that might feel right that is on the other side. If you really wanna learn how to code, put code in the way of something else. And I know a lot of people are probably watching this and thinking, oh, is my passion money? Do I want to code because I want money? Obviously, that's a reason a lot of people want to code. They're like, holy crap, it's a low barrier to entry relatively compared to being a doctor or compared to being a lawyer. And you make about the same amount of money. That's cool. Oh, that's super cool. I want to do that. I would personally argue in the case that money is not a passion, but if you really feel like it is, I would really explore that passion and ask yourself what aspects of it are you really passionate about? Passions tend to be 3D things, you know, places you can move around. So when I say my passion is design, there's a lot of room to move around in there. Like design's a pretty broad term. I could be like designing clothes or I could just be cleaning my room and making it look pretty because I like how it's designed. Or I could be going to the gym because I wanna design a body that I think looks better. It's such a broad term. There's a lot of room to move around in. And money's a pretty linear thing. It's pretty one dimensional, honestly. It's either up or down. There's not really a left or right even. It's just, it goes up and it goes down. Understand that code is a tool and you are allowed to get excited about tools that help you achieve what you want to achieve. It's not really fun to use a power drill. Well, I guess sometimes it is, but sometimes it's fun to code, but it's not always fun. Most of the time, there's not really anything inherently super interesting about a drill or code. You might say, I love this drill or I love this language because it helps me do this so easily. I like it for that reason. You don't like it because it's a drill or it's code. You like it because it's letting you get behind that part of the engine easier and it makes working on cars easier. Or you like this language because it makes writing that type of code super easy and it has a lot of libraries that allow you to do that. So if I had to say a few sentences to top this off and just summarize what I'm trying to say, I'm gonna say, nobody really likes to code. Code is just in their way. They are not super smart, they're just super driven. Find your why first, that is your first goal. Find your why and the how will make a lot of sense. And obviously be patient with yourself. And that's easier said than done. I'm very impatient with myself too. I understand that, but saying it out loud makes me feel better and I'm hoping it makes you feel better too. I hope all that makes sense. I'm kind of just like doing this off the cuff and hoping this comes together as an idea. It was something I was thinking about today and I'm hoping it helps somebody else because I saw a video called How to Code and it was really good advice. And she, in this, in this video, it was a she. She was giving really good advice. Like, you know, pick a project, don't pick a language, find tutorials, blah, blah, blah. And these are all really good advice, but these are really good advice for somebody who has the why already, right? Somebody who has the why and is just coming to this video because code is in their way. But I know there's people out there who think they wanna learn to code and don't know the why yet. This video is for those people. And the reason I know that is because I've been in these shoes before. I've beaten myself up trying to find a how without ever discussing the why. If you found this video helpful or relatable, please leave a like, it'd be super helpful. And if you wanna see more content like this where I just kind of spew my ideas out, hit the subscribe button, it would be super helpful to me. And until then, I will see you in the next one.